Hello and welcome to Spark Rugby League. We're going to talk now about Lee Radford, his departure, who's going to replace him at Hull FC. Um, we'll go straight into it, Jack. What did you make of the way Radford was sat? I think it was very, very unexpected. Um, you know, to sack him, well, I mean, I imagine um, he was told prior to the interview that Adam Pearson did on live on Sky Sports, but I think at the same time to, to let the rest of the world know that he'd been sacked, well, or that they'd, they'd parted company, rather. Yeah. Um, live on TV like that was harsh, I think, yeah. to say the least. Um, I think for a, a coach who has always had such a good relationship with Pearson and um, with the players, with a lot of the fans as well, and um, you know he's had a lot of a lot of confidence uh, put in him by by fans as well. You know to give him that treatment and not and I say release it in a statement or um, you know I think they went you know they could have gone about things a bit more professionally to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think it was very harsh to to do it live on TV, but it is what it is, I guess. In in in, yeah. in a scenario like that, but. And I, well, I, think, bad, I don't really think it makes much difference whether he announced it that night or in the morning. But like you said, it just it's very harsh on somebody who's been so successful there. Mm. Obviously, we ended the club's Wembley jinx. Yeah. Back to back Challenge Cup trophies consistently in the playoffs. She had never quite done it in Super League, yeah. which is obviously what Pearson's wanted. He's mm. wanted them to be more consistent and challenge at the top of Super League year on year, which hasn't happened, no. been too inconsistent and obviously the end to last season was really poor, yeah. missing out on the playoffs, they should have easily got in the playoffs and then the start to this season has been very up and down shall we say. Well that's it, but, I think you, you'd say that it might have come as, come as a surprise like I did but you do look at those results and how inconsistent they've been, I mean they started this season brilliantly with that big win over Leeds but since that they've just sort of tailed off a little bit yeah. and, and if, you know, you look at sort of their key players; they're just not performing. No. Um, I mean, I think the other night against Warrington, that game, the amount of errors they made were was ridiculous, and just just simple errors as well. Yeah. Um, and and there's just something within the team I think that's just not not sticking. Yeah. Um, they've not got that cutting edge that that a lot of other teams seem to have, and they, they, I think you, you could possibly say they've gone a little bit stale. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that's why it's you know eventually why. Why this decision has been made, but um, the key now is who who are they going to bring in? Well, of course, Sharon, yeah, and, and just before we go on to that, I just I think no matter how inconsistent they've been, you've got to feel that Pearson probably had it in his head that he was going to make a decision, mm. even perhaps if they hadn't have got that golden point win over Wakefield the week before, wouldn't yeah. Bradford have been sacked after that game? Well, you've got to probably say maybe he would have been. Possibly. A lot of people saying it's a very spur of the moment decision from Pearson but surely he must have had thoughts about doing yeah. it had um, had it in his mind that look we need to maybe change coach mm. Radders has been there for seven years um, but again like you say I think there's a right way to go about it it wouldn't have hurt anybody just to let that like do the normal post match stuff after that yeah. game the following morning re press release all I see release a press release part company with Lee Radford, Pearson can put his bit in the press release yeah. and it's just like you said and a bit more professional it was very harsh, harsh on Lee Radford and um, he's done a good job there overall and mm. he's a whole, whole lad so it's going to hurt him and you've got to hope that he will yeah. now go on to bigger and better things maybe but it'll be interesting to, to see which way Hull will go with this because you've yeah. wrote an article the other day mm. and you've listed a lot of potential replacements for Radford, do you want to run through them? Well, yeah, there are a fair few. Um, either that I've I've sort of seen linked. There are a fair few uh, names flying around on social media. Um, you know, people putting forward who they think or or who's been rumoured. Um, I think one name that I think stands out to me and that would definitely make sense is Craig Fitzgibbon. Yeah. Um, a player that well, a former player um, of Hull. Uh, obviously, spent most of his career in the NRL. Um, played for Sydney Roosters, played for Australia, played for New South Wales origin, um, and then spent the last I think it was two years of his career um, with the Black and Whites. Uh, he, I think he would be a really good appointment. He's spent the past few years um, as assistant coach at at the Roosters, yeah. um, assisting Trent Robinson. Obviously, they've had back to back premierships, um, and as as an assistant coach, that's not a bad no. sort of resume to have um, as someone who is starting out their coaching career. 
Um, I think you see it as well with a lot of a lot of assistant coaches from Australia. You know, I mean, Dave Fern is a poor example. He didn't do yeah. brilliantly, obviously, when he came over here. But you've seen uh, plenty of success stories. Um, Nathan Brown came over, yeah. um, did a great job. Um, obviously, Justin Holbrook, who's gone back over there now. Um, I think Fitzgibbon could have a similar similar impact. You know, he knows the club. Um, he's been, you know, from from the two years he had there. Uh, when he's returned to the UK with the Roosters, um, I think I've I've read a couple of stories and, and interviews where he's he's spoken fondly about his time with Hull FC. And I think he even visited the club again. Yeah. Um, so I think he would definitely be um, a really good contender. Um, it'd give him a bit of a break as well. You know, he'd get this opportunity to to lead a club of his own as opposed to being an assistant and um, with one that he has such an affinity with uh, I could definitely see him taking that job but I'll, I'll run through a few of the other names that have been flying around on, on Twitter and Facebook and places like that Stephen Kearney he yeah. has won the um, the current New Zealand Warriors coach obviously yeah. another former Hull player, Hull player yeah. um, Brian Noble who I think is, is that, that for me is a, a bit of a strange one that would be yeah. an odd direction to go down yeah. um, I think a lot of people know about Brian Noble and his coaching style and um, you know, he's, he's he's sort of had a reputation of very much someone who will who will just pull a club from from the depths. But I don't think I don't know if you'd say Hull FC are really at that point yet. I mean, no. remember what we did with Wigan in oh six, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, when he saved them from relegation and controversially, um, <laughs> controversially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously, he's just recently left Toronto. So I think yeah. the fact that the, the the timing of those two occurrences of Radford leaving his position and and Noble also leaving his has just sort of coincided and perhaps made people think you know maybe um, you know put two and two together but that that'd be a strange one in in my opinion um, Ian Watson from Salford uh, is mm. another name I I mean you look at a couple of the names that I'm going to mention in a minute as well you know it would be very difficult to tie down Watson's obviously got an affinity with Salford. Um, really enjoys being their coach. It seems obviously led them to the grand final last year, and for me that'd be it'd be a smart choice. But again, a really difficult one. Um, Nathan Brown, who I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, he's another name that's been banded about. Yeah. Uh, Daryl Powell and Danny Ward, obviously right. another two coaches yeah. who are already at clubs. Uh, Powell has been, I think, I mean, he got ruined with the Leeds job after Brian McDermott was sacked and after Dave Ferner was sacked and, and didn't end up going. And, and, yeah. the, and if he was to go anywhere, you would think it would be yeah. Leeds other than Castleford. But again, similar to Ian Watson with Salford, you'd think Powell is pretty... You know, he's, he's, he's obviously settled at Castleford and wouldn't want to leave there. And Danny Ward is a, is a strange one, I think, because he, again, I think would be a really good appointment. Would he want to leave London where he's built so much, built a great culture around that club, a culture that, that saw them unexpectedly reach the Super League and put up a really good fight. Um when a lot of people had them down as, you know, odds on for relegation. Eventually they did get relegated, yeah. but you know, not without surprising a fair few teams, getting doing the double over St Helens who ended up being champions, no mean feat. Um, you know, would he want to leave that club that he's built so much um, you know, He's built so much up in terms of the squad, in terms of the backroom staff, the culture. Um, the fans are really on his side. Would he want to leave that? I mean, it's a great opportunity to come, well, to go to a club like Hull, but it, it, it's a case of what he'd be leaving behind. Yeah, I think it's a difficult one. Um, I'm very much one for champion, champion in British coaches, but I'm saying the, the ones you mentioned there, Ian Watson, I think. I think Salford will start to get going. I think they will be okay this season. I, yeah. mean, I don't think he will leave them in the lurch. Um, Likewise. Yeah, mu much the same with Daryl Powell. I mean, is is I think is it even really a step up? I'm not really sure no. at the moment. Castleford going great guns, and then Danny wants the interesting one. Um, but again, it, it like you say, it would be like leaving London mm. when you feel they do probably have a decent chance of getting back up. Yeah. And maybe staying up if they come back up. Obviously, they never did the first time, done an amazing job. But if I'm looking at it purely from a whole point of view, then I probably would go for Danny Ward because I just think he's a coach that's just waiting to be given that opportunity to showcase what he can do. And he's shown already, mm. with let's be honest, an inferior squad at London last year, they were absolutely exceptional and, and were very unfortunate to be relegated. and. Mm. I think he really hi hi like showcased how good a coach he was there, and it's difficult with the the ones you mentioned. I do think Craig Craig Fitzgibbon is the obvious one. Yeah. Um, like I say, he's, he, 
like you said, he's, he's been at Hull. There is obviously a bit of uncertainty to know what you're getting sometimes mm. with an NRL assistant coach. You get a fern and you're going to get a Fern or you're going to get a Holbrook, you know. Yeah. Like, it's very difficult to tell, but you've got to say that. It's sort been... of one extreme or the other, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it, he has been at a club that have been so successful. Mm. He's been under Trent Robinson, who's obviously a terrific coach. It was brilliant at Catalans in Super League and has been exceptional in NRL. So he is the obvious one, but I mean, it's fair to say they're not short of choices. They're not. Well, I mean, there's a couple that I, I left off there. Sean Wayne was another one that's been banded about a lot on, mm. on the forums. But again, you can't see it yeah. happening, can you, with um, obviously recently being appointed the England coach. I'd imagine that um, the wider rugby league public, and I imagine that possibly Wayne himself and um, you know those those above him in the England setup would want him to solely focus on that England yeah. squad and I think that's what ultimately is a nation we need mm. um, and then of course there is the uh, coaching duo of Andy Last and Kieran Patil who are currently in charge on an interim basis who yeah. again I think Kieran Patil in particular has been a coach crying out for an opportunity He's done work with the England Knights. I think he's worked with Canada um, as well. He's again, he's been interim coach at a couple of clubs. Um, recently, I think he was at um, Huddersfield not long ago. Lee, I think I might be right in saying. Yeah. Um, and up until he got given the job, the assistant's job at Hull at the start of this season, he was going to be witness coach. Mm. Um, so he certainly, you know, there's there's a lot of people that think very highly of Kieran Patil and, and and what he can do with a coach. And he's he's another young British co- young British coach who is looking for that opportunity. So again, he's he's another option if Adam Pearson didn't want to, you know, look elsewhere and bring someone in. They've already got two assistant coaches who are clearly passionate about the club and and want to see it go forward. But I think the only problem you get there is that will Andy Last and Kieran Patil be able to instil different sorts of structures systems cultures into a squad that's already inherited by um into a squad that's already been um you've had had those sort of same cultures built in by lee radford of which they've both been a part of creating so i think that the other thing as well obviously we're going through the the season suspension now and they have got time to make this decision yeah yeah the other thing to go with that is if they go for a fitzgiving I mean, it's not very easy to travel in the world at the moment. No. With everything that's going on, a lot. It's very true. Is yeah. a squad of thirty all training together. Mm. It, it's um, it's a break and a time to make the decision. But are you going to get that coach in and co- yeah. and manage to get his ideas and his structures across before the the game resumes? It's just mm. a very uncertain time at the same time. So, it's very difficult. If you're Adam Pearson, where are you looking? Narrow it down to three. To three? Oh, I'm glad you said to three, because if you'd have said one, I'd have been, I'd have, I'd have had no chance. Um, if I was to go three, I'd probably go Craig Fitzgibbon, um, yeah. as we've mentioned. Danny Ward, and I'm not sure about the third one. I'll go Nathan Brown, because again, he's for, for me, he's, he's a bit of an obscure choice. Again, you've mentioned there might be, you know, there could be issues with getting him over here, but he's currently a free agent. As a coach, um, he left Newcastle Knights at the end of last year. But again, he's one that's proven in Super League, and he spent time with Huddersfield and St Helens, and was yeah. uh, it was always a very popular figure. So for me, that would be the the top three. Interesting. What about uh, you? Oh, I was going to well, say you don't get away with it that easy. I, I, I agree with um, Danny Ward and and Craig Fitzgibbon. Um, the third one is difficult. I'm not sure whether they're going the the Nathan Brown direction. I just, hmm, I'm I'm just not sure he's gonna come back over here as as successful as he wore at both Huddersfield and St Helens. Mm. Um, it's, I mean, for the third choice, I mean, I mean, just probably because of his whole links. That Stephen King is probably where I would look. He's obviously he's coaching an NRL team at the moment. Yeah. So you're thinking, well, is he really going to come over to Super League? But I just, yeah, I just, I don't know whether the Warriors would stand in his way if he did want to come back here. Yeah. Um, but I definitely feel like Craig Fitzgibbon is probably the way they're going to go. You reckon? Yeah. That's what Fair I think. <laughs> They've got to go in some direction, yeah, haven't they? Yeah. So, yeah, guys, let us know your thoughts. Who you think um, will get the job? 
who should get the job, what do you think of uh, Lee Radford's departure and was it fair? Uh, please let us know in the comments, like, subscribe and we'll see you next time.